In this video, we will look at a second example of the adjusted winner procedure. Suppose that Calvin and Hobbes find a buried treasure. The items they find are as follows. A cannon, an anchor, a treasure chest, a doubloon, a figurehead, a sword, a cannonball, a wooden leg, a flag, and a crow's nest. Now Calvin and Hobbes each have equal claim to the treasure and decide to use the adjusted winner procedure to divide up these items among themselves. Now recall that the procedure begins with each party distributing a total of 100 points among the given items, where higher point assignments mean an item is valued more by that party. So suppose that Calvin and Hobbes each go into separate rooms and they divide up their 100 points as given in the table here. Now, we go through the list of items one by one and initially divide the items among the two parties according to had, who had ever placed a higher point value on each item. For example, the cannon will go to Calvin because he awarded it more points, 10 compared to Hobbes's five. The anchor will go to Hobbes. The chest will go to Hobbes, as will the doubloon and the figurehead. The sword, on the other hand, will go to Calvin since he awarded it more points than Hobbes, 15 compared to six. The cannonball will go to Calvin, the wooden leg, the flag, and the crow's nest. So this is our initial distribution of items. And then we add up the number of points that each party feels they have currently received. Calvin with the cannon, sword, cannonball, wooden leg, flag, and crow's nest currently feels that he has 44 of his points. Hobbes, on the other hand, with the anchor, chest, doubloon, and figurehead currently feels that he's walking away with 84 points. Now, the adjusted winner procedure could stop here if each party receives an equal number of points. However, that's unlikely, right? We don't want to stop right now because right now Hobbes would walk away feeling like he has really won um, this division. He's walking away with a lot more of his points compared to Calvin. If there were any items that both parties valued equally, this is the moment where we would transfer those items to the party with the smaller point total. None of those exist in this example, but I just wanted to mention it so you would know what to do. Generally, the point totals received by each party will not be equal, as in this case. The totals listed at the bottom of the table indicate the total points received by each party according to that party's initial distribution. And because the point totals are not equal, we're now going to begin to transfer items or a part of one item from one party to the other to equalize the point totals. Recall that the goal of the adjusted winner procedure is for each party to walk away with the same number of their points. Not the same number of physical items, but the same number of points. Now, to figure out which item we will transfer or share, we use what's called point ratios. The point ratio, remember, is a simple division of A's valuation divided by B's valuation, where A is the party with the greater point total, in this case, Hobbes. Notice that because we will only transfer items from our initial winner, Hobbes, to our initial loser, Calvin, we're only going to calculate point ratios for the items belonging to Hobbes. Only Hobbes will have to share. So, we calculate the point ratios. For the anchor, we take Hobbes point value of 20, divided by Calvin's points of 10, and get 2. For the chest, we take Hobbes points of 20, divided by Calvin's points of 15, and get 1.33. For the doubloon, 14 divided by 11 gives us 1.27. And for the figurehead, 30 divided by 20 gives us 1.5. Following the adjusted winner procedure, we will transfer items from Hobbes to Calvin in order of increasing point ratio, so from smallest to largest point ratio. Now, looking at our point ratios, because the doubloon has the smallest point ratio of 1.27, we will transfer the doubloon first. Notice, the doubloon was worth 14 points to Hobbes, but only 11 to Calvin. 
So we're going to take the doubloon away from Hobbes. We're going to give it to Calvin. Those additional 11 points means that Calvin will now have 55. And because Hobbes has lost his 14 points from the doubloon, it will drop him down to 70 points. We continue to transfer items from Hobbes to Calvin in increasing order of point ratios until the point totals are equal. By increasing point ratio, the next item to transfer will be the chest at 1.33. Note that if we transfer the entire chest from Hobbes to Calvin, then Calvin would suddenly have more points than Hobbes. If we transfer the entire chest, Calvin would get an additional 15 points, bumping him up to 70 and dropping Hobbes all the way down to 50. So we don't want to transfer the entire item, otherwise our initial winner, Hobbes, would become the loser. Therefore, we're not going to transfer the entire chest to Calvin, but we're going to use an algebraic procedure to find the fraction x of the chest that will be transferred from Hobbes to Calvin. So let x be the fraction of the chest that Hobbes will keep, and therefore whatever's left over, 1 minus x, will represent the fraction that Calvin will receive. In the transfer of the chest, Hobbes will keep 20x points from the chest, and Calvin will receive 15 times 1 minus x points. Notice the 20 comes from the amount of points Hobbes initially gave the chest. The 15 comes from the amount of points Calvin initially awarded the chest. Note that Calvin currently has 55 points, right? He has won. The cannon, the doubloon, the sword, the cannonball, the wooden leg, the flag, and the crow's nest, all those are going to Calvin. No one's taking those away from Calvin. So he gets all of the 55 points from those items. And then that fraction of the chest, 15 times 1 minus x. Hobbes, on the other hand, he has won the anchor in the figurehead for a total of 50 points. And he gets to keep some portion of the chest represented by 20x. We want to equate the point totals so that Calvin and Hobbes have the same number of points. So Calvin's points is represented by 55 plus 15 times 1 minus x. Hobbes points represented by 50 plus 20x. And we do a little bit of algebra. Distributing the 15, we see 55 plus 15 minus 15x equals 50 plus 20x. Adding 55 and 15, we get 70 minus 15x equals 50 plus 20x. Adding the 15x to the other side gives us 35x on the right. Subtracting the 50 gives us 20 on the left. Dividing, x is 20 divided by 35 or 4 sevenths. Therefore, Hobbes will keep 4 sevenths of the chest and Calvin will receive the remaining portion three-sevenths of the chest. And we've done this in such a way that Calvin and Hobbes will have the same number of points, right? Notice the significance of our solution again. Given our equation, if x is four-sevenths, plugging in x equals four-sevenths, each side of our equation equals 61.43. Each party will receive an equal number of points. This is where the adjusted winner procedure ends. With the partial transfer of the chest, all of the items have been divided in a way that each party will consider equitable. Here's our final solution. The result of the adjusted winner procedure is shown in the distribution of items as shown in the table. Calvin gets the cannon, the doubloon, the sword, the cannonball, the wooden leg, the flag, the crow's nest, and three-sevenths of the chest. Hobbes gets the anchor, the figurehead, and four-sevenths of the chest. Now, both parties should walk away from this distribution feeling that it was fair because both parties are walking away with the same number of points, in this case 61.43. So again, adjusted winner procedure, the goal is an equal number of points but not an equal number of physical items. Now, for discussion, uh, I asked you at the beginning of the last video to think about experience that you had had dividing things fairly, either with a roommate, when you were moving out, um, or something like that. 
In your experience, were you treated fairly? Would either the divide and choose method of the previous video or the adjusted winner have improved the fairness of the outcome in your experience? What do you think would happen if you had suggested the use of one of these algorithms to resolve the division? Do you think you would be accused of applying some sort of abstract mathematics in order to confuse or dupe the party or parties? If someone proposed using one of these algorithms to you, how would you respond? Do they seem fair to you? Do they seem feasible in the situations that you have encountered? I love to hear what you have to think um, about these uh, about these procedures um, and whether or not you think they're a good idea um, and a way to divide items. Thanks so much. That's all for now. Bye, guys.